Banking off of the northeast winds Sailing on summer breeze And skipping over the ocean like a stone Welcome to Classics. All right, so the movie that we watched was Midnight Cowboy from 1963. To earn cash as a freelance sex stud and work towards his dream of becoming a kept man, hayseed hustler Joe Buck heads to New York City where an improbable friendship blooms when he meets seedy con man Ratso Rizzo. What, what, what do we like about Midnight Cowboy? Oh, act, by far, the acting in this movie was fantastic. You could not... I, I can see why this picture why this movie got best picture. Just Dustin Hoffman was just fantastic at this movie. I, I, I don't I know who the actor movie. for Joe Buck was. Um, that's Jen Voight. Jen Voight was just excellent. I sat there. I'm like Anaconda. You know, and I still haven't <laughs> yeah I still haven't seen some of the older Dustin Hoffman movies, but this was just perfect. Like he played these characters were so believable. Like yeah, I can definitely believe these people. It was he, it was he amazing. Got the ticks down. Yeah. And just like all all this stuff and. Yeah, Dustin Hoffman, it, it just kills this movie for me. Just, I, I don't have a lot of likes in this movie, which is not really, it's not, I don't feel like it's necessarily a movie's fault so much as the era that came out in. But uh, God, Dustin Hoffman, and you know what, John Boyd too. John Boyd as as this kind of this naive uh, Texan boy, like coming from apparently some really horrible stuff uh into just he's like i'm gonna make a new start and i'm gonna go be a uh, gigolo and have sex well, with some ladies and get some money well yeah, i i think the real the real shining thing in this movie is dustin hoffman and to a lesser degree john voight's uh, acting but i would actually say i'd actually flip that i think john voight gives the best performance in this movie I think wow. I, <laughs> I, I moved like four feet away yeah. from you in disbelief. No, I, I <laughs> really. Honestly, yeah, I mean, I honestly, I couldn't t- take my eyes off John Voight in this movie. I thought he was there was such a magnetic performance here. Uh, I thought Dustin Hoffman's was a little bit more gimmicky. Uh, I just found John Voight's performance much more honest and much more interesting and and intricate. Probably the best role of his career. Well, that, oh, I'm not yeah. going to disagree with you there. I just, I don't know. There's just something about him in this movie that that makes it, that you just can't turn away. I mean, and, and Dustin Hoffman, to uh, just a slightly lesser degree, in my opinion, uh, for the same, same reason. You just, like, these characters, you just cannot stop watching them. You just, like, you just, you're just glued to them. You know, it would have been nice if they had more of a plot, and maybe the ending was a major dislike for me, because I didn't like it, but... That's also a lie. I, I, it was kind of like the natural place I thought it was going to end, to be honest. Um, I, I think my major dislike for this movie would be it's it's weird for reasons that I don't, I can't understand, like why it would just randomly just flip out and get, it would, there would be points where I'm just like, kind of, kind of like I was saying with Fear and Loathing, where you just kind of feel like you're on drugs. Like it where uh, it would, it would the, the drug party. <laughs> yeah, well, the, there like was the a drug party, minutes, but yeah. there's also like all these flashbacks that never get explained. Like you, you can kind of like piece them together over time, but it's never explained. Like what actually happened, what he's remembering. Um, I kept thinking he got molested as a child be, because, well, one because he was going into like sex trade, and also because they kept flashing back to like him like laying in bed with like his grandma and grandpa and stuff like that, and. He, and it's like, okay, well, it, but it would come in, like, dream sequences, so it's like, well, did this actually happen? And then, like, the, it would change at different points, like, what what actually happened. So it was so hard to tell what the shit was going on, and I feel like it was supposed to give you important backstory, but at the same time, it's, give you, it's all, like, so vague. I, I could have done without that. I could have just done with a little more clarity. It, even just him saying, like, explaining something, like, maybe having a moment with, uh, with Rico and saying, hey, man, you know... <laughs> This this happened to me, and this is why I'm here. Uh, you know that was one of the, my major dislikes too. Is um, there are these all these clips of his backstory, and it doesn't necessarily explain his backstory, but it alludes to the fact that um, maybe his grandmother was inappropriate with him, um, and he had some bad sexual experiences as a teen, um, but. And and that's all kind of couched to kind of explain where he is in his life and he, and where he is as a person. And um, I actually think he's actually gay 
I, yeah, he, a he's, repressed yeah. gay person. So, and I think that's all to try to explain that. But at the same point, like, I, I feel like it's such a half ass way to try to explain who he is and why he is that it, it would have just been better if they just didn't include that at all. Uh, either don't include it or yeah. you know, just lay it on the table at some point. That plus all like the weird religious overtone to this movie, which again never oh. gets explained. Yeah. Like like everything seems to come back to like Jesus and God and everything, but with no real context to anything. It, but they kept it like every few scenes, like you'd hear it on the radio or they would show like uh, signs or uh, or whatever of people being religious, and it's just like. All right, I, you keep telling me this, so I, I guess it's important. But why? Why is it important? It's like, cause... his like second client. I mean, it was like, oh, we're gonna do this thing, and oh wait, yeah. also oh, now opens the bathroom pray. door, and there's Jesus sitting right there. It's like, pray oh, with me. Okay, this is like the fifth time you've mentioned God in this movie. Is this a theme? <laughs> but but without like, again, without ever giving you anything, I guess you're supposed to just figure that out for yourself. I, I didn't really pick up on the religious elements of this movie. Um, I don't know. It's just for me, the whole backstory was so one dimensional. Um, and maybe those side things were so one dimensional. The God story was so one dimensional. I didn't understand. They didn't put enough time into the the background uh, of these characters, the background of the uh, the story. It, so that didn't really work for me. The characters worked for me, but everything else was suspect, I think. Totally. I don't know. So this movie won Best Picture. I think it should have won, like, I, I don't know. Uh, the actors would have. Yeah, that, see, that's what I'm thinking. Is like It seems more like a Best Actor, Best Supporting Role. All movie, Best Movie? Yeah, I want to know what kind of shit was out that year. <laughs> or, or how well were these other movies acted? Because like, that's where this movie shines, is in the acting, not in the fucking movie. Yeah, and that was, that. if I had an advantage, like, the best process was the acting. I mean... You go through and, you know, I just saw the arson. One of the scenes, you know, he has to give up his coat because he's being, he's poor and he has to sell it to a pawn shop. And you're like, all right, whatever. I mean, in this, I felt, he, you know, in this scene, the he goes in and he has to sell his radio. And I just felt terrible for the guy. Yeah. I'm like, it's like that's wow, you're his, poor like, Dusty. His yeah, thing, is, his like movie. one thing is this like $10 thing that we, that, you know, we take for granted. You know, and he's got to sell it and he looks so terrible doing it. And I'm like, wow. I mean, I felt really bad for him. And you could just you could what they were going through you could feel yourself you know in the drug part you're like wow this is really messed up and you got you could kind of go through these emotional kind of hangovers with them if you put it in a way <laughs> uh why don't we go ahead and rate this movie yes uh let's rate midnight cowboy i will give this a two and a half um the the almost entirely based on the acting this movie the, the movie itself is not that great um and it's it's hard to recommend other than to see just some really good performances out of John Voight and uh, Dustin Hoffman. Um, I personally think Dustin Hoffman was the star of this movie, but <laughs> others disagree. But uh, yeah, if you're if you're just looking for a well acted movie, this is a way to go. If you're looking for a good movie, you might want to skip it. I think it's much better than you're giving credit to it, Phil. Um, uh, the acting does carry it, and you're stuck to this movie because of John Voight, and you're stuck to this movie because of Dustin Hoffman. Um, and it, at the end, it does come around, and it does have an emotional punch to it. And I'm going to give it a three and a half. What about you, BJ? I'd I give it a solid three. I mean, it's it's one worth seeing sometime in your lifetime. I mean, it, the acting is... You, you can't say enough about the acting in this movie. You know, if there was more of a a plot or you know more of a point to the movie i could see giving a four and a five like if they had this acting nowadays and with you know even if the semi-plot it would just be hands down it'd be a best movie but the plot kind of held it back there was no you know there was no point to the movie i mean yeah i i can see some you'd have to really kind of stretch to find a reason to give this movie a plot <laughs>